okay, there's something there. That's yeah, a good joke. Yeah, that's a good joke. Yeah. yeah. So it's got to make you uncomfortable. That's though Carlin Pryor. I guess always Lenny Bruce. That's was their style of comedy. Oh yeah. And yeah. so that's kind of set the format for everybody. Lenny, man, everybody that wants to that that is into stand up comedy or wants to be a comedian needs to know the name of Lenny Bruce. Oh yeah. That guy, man, the early years went through so much crap to be able well to give us the platform to say what it is yeah. that we want to say. You wouldn't have the comedy that you have nowadays if it wasn't for Lenny Bruce. That yeah. dude was being arrested for the stuff he was saying on stage. Yeah. He would yeah. cuss and then be put in handcuffs as soon as he stepped off the stage just for yeah. cussing. Yeah. yeah. And it ended up killing his career too because he 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 swerved into it. You know, they thought it was, you know, turn out of the curve. They, he turned yeah. into it and just started trying to antagonize people yeah. and it ended up ruining his career. Like he But but he, you know, I mean he went for it though. Oh, and, yeah. and I hope I don't know what happens after you die, but if he like if he can look down or yeah. just know what his and I hope that he knows what is yeah. his impact on yeah. the whole art form of stand up. Man, he was crazy. Like he would take on the media and everything. Oh, One yeah. of my favorite bits that he done, and like he was talking about fake news back in the fifties. Yeah. One time he got two separate newspapers, yeah. and I think it was a story about some bank robbery uh-huh. or something like that. And one story uh, they said that the people got—I don't know the exact details, but I'll just—I'll just say, like somebody got away with like seventeen thousand, yeah. and this uh, newspaper said that they got away with fourteen thousand. Yeah. And he would just like talk about how yeah, yeah. the media is fake. And uh, man, he he was taking on big establishments and police yeah. departments and all that back in the fifties. Oh yeah, yeah. That dude, he, he, awesome, he, he, meant, he meant a lot well, when it comes to stand up. He was Jewish too, wasn't he? You think he looks th- like it? I'm pretty sure he was. I can, I can see that. Which you could probably trace his roots to the great Jewish explosion of comedy. You had you know people like Woody Allen and people like like that's always been Mel Brooks, people like that. You think how many yeah. people he inspired out of that group of people? You know. Yeah, that's the really if you if you want to talk about cultures or race, which I don't think race is is necessarily. I think it's cultures. You need those catalysts, you know, like the British invasion of music, you know, Elvis or or Muddy Waters or Howlin' Wolf. Even before that, these Delta Blues guys inspired all these little white English boys yeah. to make this great music. Like, thank God that they inspired this group of people because it is a baseline mm-hmm. for all music now. You know, mm-hmm. and Lenny Bruce, I you know the the Jewish community's always had a big presence in comedy. You can trace that back probably to him, you know? Yeah. And if I'm wrong, cut this out of the, the interview because well, well, I, I well, don't I, sound stupid. Well, <laughs> well, I think that you uh, are definitely onto something, man, because, yeah, there's a lot of uh, great Jewish comedians. Seinfeld, I think, is Oh, he Jewish. is, yeah. 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 But Sandler, I mean, the list goes oh, on. Oh, they've had a huge presence in comedy. Huge presence. Huh. And, see, like Lenny, he, you know, paved the way for a lot of artists to say what they wanted to say. But it, yeah. comedy really didn't start getting crazy until, like, yeah. I guess seventies movies. Whenever it comes to Mel Brooks, yeah. the whole Blazing Saddles oh, and all that still stuff, still good today. <laughs> still good. Still good. Awesome. Did you know that uh, Pryor was supposed to play the sheriff? No, that, that? He, he got a co-writing credit on that. He helped write some of that movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That was apparently there during the time though that Pryor was. He said on his uh, close to his deathbed, one of his last interviews, that was his only big regret. Well, wow. they, he was not nicer to people, which I think on your deathbed is probably going to be everyone's regret. Yeah, you know, but. Uh, he wishes the studio wouldn't um, insure him. I think is the way the story goes, because he was just too he was, volatile at the time. Yeah, he was. And wild. I was like, "I'm sorry, I got to get this movie made. They won't let you do it." The the other guy sorry. done a great job though. Man. Oh, great! Yeah, I, I, I got it. Be so good to see Pryor in that though. What was the other movie that Pryor and uh, uh, Gene were in? Gene Wilder. Oh, uh, Hear No Evil, See No Evil, Silver Streak. Um, I, I was thinking of Silver Streak. Three That's or four. Fun movie. What's the one with their there are prisoners in the mm-hmm. rodeo. Was that that's seen oh, yeah. in it? Um, I don't know, man. But they did several mm-hmm. good movies. But the, but uh, you had like that, like the craziness with comedy. Whenever it comes to films in the seventies, yeah. But whenever it comes to stand up, the eighties, man, were wild. Well, oh, I guess yeah. like late seventies with Pryor, but then yeah. in the eighties, you had Sam Kennison. Yeah. You had people like uh, oh, what is this dude's name? Carlin, George Carlin. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't think of Carlin, but I mean, the eighties was. It was a wild era, especially with Kennison. That's hey, an, that's another uh, comedian that I yeah. like to, that I like to show like younger comedians yeah. that are up and coming. You need to know who Kennison was. Yeah. That dude's backstory, man. 
Wow, it used to be a southern preacher and very southern sound. And I've listened to some of his old sermons. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He man, he was out there. Yeah, he was. He was uh, <laughs> surprised he wasn't carrying around snakes like the stuff he says. <laughs> but man went on to be one of the most vulgar, wild oh, comedians yeah. that the world has ever seen. Like yeah. he was, he was more of a rock star than he was a yeah. comedian. Oh, he done several songs. Like, yeah, Wild Thing. Yeah, yeah that was the yeah. big one. He was. But man, the whole. Uh, the, the dead people joke. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can't even say and those that, people like joke. those people will eventually be canceled. You, you, I, I'm afraid we're going to get to a point in this society, and you've already done it with Kennison. You never see him on mainstream anything. They never no. award him anything, nothing. And you're going to get that stuff out, but you've got to see the seed of what that. You know, I always tell people going to music. I know we're jumping around, but I say there was four things that changed everything. And there's there's a hundred things before these four, but kind of in modern history. You had the Elvis changed everything. No one had ever been a rock star before. No one had ever made that kind of money. No one ever had a career like that. Then you had the Beatles. No one produced their own material at that rate and just became that popular. Then you had Michael, the advent of music videos and MTV. And there was a time and place where you had to have a supreme talent at that time. And then, like I said, with Garth Brooks, and you look at the waves from which those four people made in the last 70, 80 years, it it's inspired everything. So when you start cutting things out of society, like Kennison and stuff, well, you don't get those waves anymore. If yeah. you cut him out, you don't get the next Kennison. And we all enjoyed the Kennison, so why don't we, why can't we have another one? Yeah, you know. Well, well, well the whole cancel culture thing. It's I, I know that they're trying to do good, but sometimes they're like they're overdoing it almost. Yeah. Oh, See, it's insane. <clears throat> well, this, there's this one experience that I had in Huntington. At this, I'm, I'm not going to name the establishment or anything like that because there's still a lot of good comedians that go there. And yeah. It's a good place. It wasn't their fault. But the guy, it was the guy that was hosting the show. Uh, I told a very risque joke. I don't even want to like tell yeah. the two types of people that it included. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the, the two types of people that it included, I got friends that are in both yeah. of those categories. And I ran the joke by them. Wanted yeah. to see like if I if I have a joke like that that's about a uh, yeah. just a certain type of people I have I, I know a lot of people so yeah. I'll run the jokes by them see what's accurate see if I can work it out a little bit more say or just even see if I shouldn't say it at all yeah I, I like to do that and I got the okay from a lot of them you know yeah. and there was even some in the crowd that night yeah. and they were laughing hysterically like yeah. they were like really like enjoying mm-hmm. the show. And this, the host, I guess, was just this social justice warrior. And yeah. as soon as I got off the stage, I had a good vibes shirt on. Yeah. He's like, well, that was a lot of hate speech from somebody who has a good vibe shirt on. I'm like, dude, yeah. everybody that I was joking around about in the joke, in the crowd, yeah. is laughing. Yeah. They are enjoying it. You are you don't even fit in any of those categories. Yeah. And you're the one hating on it. Like yeah. A lot of people will try to stand up. For people that are actually enjoying the comedy, yeah, and it's that's not the battlefield for that. It just no. isn't. And, and and stand up, man. Like I, I know that uh, it, it's a very risque uh, art form, and yeah. it, it, some people do get offended. But like you uh, mentioned earlier, you're working on the joke. Yeah, you, you you don't know. I mean, like what even Chris Rock is a great example. If five people laugh and ten people get mad, well. Maybe I don't need to say this joke, but damn it, it's funny. Or they wouldn't have laughed. Like exactly. it's funny to somebody. Yeah, you know, it's and, funny somewhere. Yeah, and, and like even at that one show, the Wonderlust show that I was talking yeah. about, like there was this group of like what looked like college kids in the back, and yeah. they were cracking up laughing. You know, the uh, yeah. seventy-year-old grandma in front of me wasn't <laughs> wasn't. Yeah. But people enjoy different things, man. Like I don't re- really like. I don't know, classical music. Yeah. But there's some people out there that love oh, it. Absolutely. You, know? you don't have to laugh. You, even if you... Yeah. I, I don't know, man. It, I, I love stand-up, and I'm not going out to try to offend people, but people don't need to take it so personal. Yeah. A lot of the yeah. times, it's just joking around. Yeah. That's what yeah. it is, is jokes. I don't believe half the stuff that I'm saying, but I'm saying it because... It's outrageous it's or it's funny. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's like, well, like you just said, it's an angle. It may make yeah. you think differently. Yeah. You know, Kennison, another great example, buddy, he uh, had some crazy jokes, but it, it made yeah. you think. And there's also, if as long as there's truth to it, yeah. it's funny because well, you, it's funny because it's true. You take self deprivation or, you know, people are, well, people make fun of themselves. There's a reason people do it. 
you know, if if Pryor's making fun of himself, it's not because he thinks himself all those things. It's because it's funny. Exactly. And it's because it works. That's that's uh, self depreciating, I guess is what I meant to say. But uh that's why it works. And I always liked Kevin Hart when they try to take um that award ceremony from him. They said, Well, he told a bunch of, of jokes against the homosexual community. He's like, I don't care, they're funny. He's like, Well, you can't host. He's like, I don't care if they were funny. Yes. And that and that's you know, what they need like, to be, man. No one cares. He's like, You've got to some people have to start standing up. And, you know, Eddie Murphy had a joke like that where he said that he did a whole. This is probably back on Raw. Oh, you talking about uh, the Bill Cosby? When Bill one? Cosby called yes, him, told him to stop telling them jokes, and then he called Richard, and Richard's like, "Do people laugh?" And then tell Bill Cosby to shut up. <laughs> yeah, He's it like, is, man. Yeah. And I, I love that joke because it's so true. It's probably real. It probably really happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah I believe it. It's just funny yeah. though how I think Bill. I think Bill Cosby was mad about his cussing or something. Yeah. Like, oh, you don't need to cuss so <laughs> much. Or, but and yet yeah, he done all the horrible things that he did. Yeah. A lot of hypocrisy in the world nowadays. That's we're all bad people, man. Like, yeah, are we man. not? Well, that's well, what kills and, me, And sometimes man. that's what uh, that's what some people may not like about a joke yeah. is like it makes them realize that they're a little bit of a messed up person yeah. too. I mean, if you keep pushing the good bar, because good and bad, I don't think it's a real thing. I think there's, I don't, th- I don't even know if good and evil's real. I know that sounds crazy, but like there's things that I see and I'm like, I hate that. I just wish that never existed. But I think if you get into people and like, and you accept things, it's like when mothers, you see this a lot in this place because you are in Eastern Kentucky because you have a lot of drug addiction. You'll see mothers accept things from from sons that went, you know, astray that they would never accept from generalized society. So why did you accept that there? Why do you not see that as evil, you know? Exactly. And I think it's because it's all perspective and who you are. And I think we're all kind of messed up. 